Hi, welcome back to Take 5 with Belkin Corp. Uh, I have my colleague with me, Jason Manning. Hi, everyone. And today's topic is exhaust data, and specifically what it is, how it relates to the 811 industry, and what we can do with it, and what kind of benefits it can have to improve uh, managing and protecting our assets. Uh, the first thing we're going to talk about is exactly what is exhaust data. This is kind of an industry term. It's, it's kind of a little bit more of a technical term within, um, within software and the software business. So it's not necessarily something that most people would be uh, immediately recognize. Uh, so let me kind of pull up a slide deck here. In fact, Sam, this was one of those things, again, in a conversation that we had where we're looking outside this industry. It's really not something that I've heard spoken about in damage prevention much at all, um, where we're kind of looking outside and, and talking about these sort of things. So we thought it was sort of an interesting, uh, kind of an interesting concept to bring into damage prevention. Yeah, exactly. Very much close to our uh, one of our previous take five with Pelican Corps, the uh, the concept of A11 versus Uber Eats. So again, this is kind of a thought experiment looking outside our industry and seeing if there's things that we can uh, take from that and apply to the Able one world. Uh, so what is exhaust data? Exhaust data is really kind of secondary data that comes out of a process that typically happens either online or, or uh, part of a, a software process in simple terms. And I'm sure there's uh, more technical people out there that would think that's a ridiculous definition. But in general, the idea is, is that this is secondary data that uh, comes out of that, that primary process. And examples would be something like uh, your purchase history when you when you buy something online, you know what credit card did you use? When did you buy it? What are you buying it? Uh, that's all valuable information, obviously, to online retailers. Uh, social media: what are you engaging with? Uh, what are you interacting with? What do you like? What do you share? What do you post? Obviously, this is a big thing uh, in, uh, in the world today. Uh, things like uh, you know traffic information. If we look at like Waze or Google Earth, uh, where you can crowdsource data and have that information updated in real time, so I might know when there's a speed trap in front of me or if there's a car accident, things like that. That's another form of taking exhaust data and then making it uh, useful and having a process around it. And then, of course, uh, your search in your, your search history uh, online. So, you know, what have you looked at? Uh, what are you engaged with? What are you interested in? So if you're looking for flights or something like that, obviously you'll notice that when you go to another site, you'll have your dates and destination kind of already locked in place. Uh, that's an example of, again, an uh, industry looking at that exhaust data and, and creating a use out of it. So I'm going to ask Jason here in this next slide to kind of explain what is 811 related exhaust data. What is the exhaust data in our current process? Right. Sure. Uh, happy to. And Sam, as you'd mentioned before, uh, you know, this is not the strict definition of exhaust data. If you sort of, you know, look it up, I think we're, we're talking more about the concept of is there data being collected that actually has use beyond its initial purpose? And if we think about our damage prevention world, you know, that comes down to things like every time we do 811 tickets, we're collecting all sorts of information. We've got, a, a, in fact, a huge amount of historical data there. Um, giving us, you know, the who, what, when, where uh, of, of all of these tickets. Um, there's actually historical sort of volume information to know when are we busy, when are we not. Uh, you know, that's something that we know, for example, fast food restaurants, uh, uh, leave it to me to bring it back to food, uh, but used to understand, well, what are their historical sort of peaks and valleys so that they can understand staffing and inventory. Um, but we, we have that information in 811. Uh, you know, we know when when work gets done, uh, there's information about who's doing it, the personnel who was you know present at the at the time. Um, every day, there are thousands and thousands and thousands of truck rolls where someone's going out uh, hooking up to find utilities and you know finding where they are, locating them, uh, and then, putting paint on the ground, and that's pretty much the end of it. Um, but they've gone through a tremendous amount of effort to sort of find this thing. It's almost like I sort of jokingly said, you know, it's, it's a bit like, you know, succeeding, hunting down treasure, and then just burying it back again and sort of, you know, <laughs> leaving right. it there. Um, and then finally, of course, so many uh, locators are going out and they're, they're taking photos. Uh, they're, they've got documents. They've got a ton of information about... 
uh, again, that, that can be used for other things. So there's a, a huge wealth of information out there. Um, it's just for us to use it, I guess. Yeah, good point, Jason. Um, so I guess that's the next question here is, uh, what can we actually do with this ABLE1 exhaust data? And uh, what are some potential use cases around that? Okay, so we've got some, some uh, I guess, uh, maybe hypothetical. Some of them are actually real and, and we, you know, we know they're being done right now. Uh, but there's a bunch of things that can be done. Uh, one of them being AI risk assessment. And again, AI we're, we're talking about here. I suppose um, technically, are we strictly following that definition here? Maybe yes, maybe no. Um, right. But there's a there's a tremendous amount of of uh, information about you know what type of work leads to what type of damage. Um, even uh, you know I guess it's it's the same argument that we have for a lot of the sort of big data analysis that is done is if you have enough data points you can start to see patterns in things. And you can start to understand, you know, are, cer are there certain areas, for example, where tickets are done um, that are more prone to, to uh, cause damages? Uh, are there, you know, certain types of work and things like that? Uh, all of those things can be, can be sort of harnessed to, uh, to do some risk assessment. Um, we have asset inspection and, uh, and maintenance, which was, uh, which was another one. Maybe I'll let you uh, uh, just sort of talk about that one briefly. Yeah, absolutely. So this is just kind of based off the concept of, through the excavation process. Obviously, when we mark out, uh, we mark out the underground assets, and then we go and we expose these assets a lot of the time. Uh, if you're a municipality or an asset owner, being able to take a look at, inspect your uh, your asset as it's visible, take pictures of it, uh, and then record that data and have that data available for uh, kind of within your repository or your EAM or whatever you have to be able to make decisions like, you know, how long is this uh, pipe or this utility going to last before it needs to be replaced? What's the current condition? I think uh, in Connecticut or a lot of places out east, there's a lot of still uh, cast iron in the ground. And this cast iron, you know, uh, is in a whole variety of different conditions. It could probably go another 50 years or some of it, you know, needs to get replaced, you know, within the next yeah. couple of months or something. In fact, you were even saying the other day, Sam, and we were talking about this, you were actually saying uh, that really companies could, if they wanted to, um, identify areas that they know they haven't actually had eyes on in a certain amount of time right? and and take advantage, sort of flag those areas so that they know when tickets come in where that's going to be dug up uh, to, to sort of trigger an inspection uh, exactly. to say, hey, yeah. wait a minute, you know, we haven't looked at this in 30 years, but someone just put through a request, uh, an excavation request, and they're going to be tearing up this whole street. I mean, what better time to actually uh, get firsthand um, a sort of a, a visualization of it? Uh, and that's that's a, a really great concept and one I think that is probably very much underused. No, I agree. Yeah. Um, we've got the GIS update and correction. To me, this is the, this is the big one. Um, the, the locators, this is the sort of reburying the treasure thing. You know, right now, so many of these locates are ending up as paint on the ground, literally all of this money that goes into uh, the whole damage prevention process is ending up as something that gets, you know, pulled out or uh, ripped up when the shovel goes in the ground or washed away by the rain. Um, and it's not being collected uh, systematically. Right. And there's a huge amount of information there. Uh, in fact, the equipment that uh, gets used to do the, the locates uh, there's a huge amount of information there, and, and this is something that we sort of, uh, again, one of the, our, our uh, uh, tangent conversations, uh, we were talking about the black box idea, right, with um, with airlines. You know, you always hear about right. this is a plane crash, and, and then, of course, they're they looking for the black box so they can get all the kind of telemetry from the, uh, from the plane. Um, but the locate industry is uh, it's it's full of liability for whoever is doing the locate itself, 
And they've got actually a ton of that, that we, if we want to call it telemetry, but it's the metadata for the locate. So right. they've got, you know, how many satellites were they connected to when they took the signal, uh, the signal itself from the locate device. Uh, what type of device they were using. Yeah. What type of device they're using, the current that they're picking up. There's so much information there um, that could be used either for quality control um, for, you know, in the case of a damage, uh, you know, if all you've left is paint and you have a photo that's taken from a weird angle, it's just not the same as being able to, you know, look up and see, uh, you know, every point you collected exactly where you were, where the locator was standing, how many satellites he was connected to. Like, right. there's a ton of information there. And I, I, there's, it's just, I think, something that is is untapped. Um and the final point that we had was, you know, faster locate times. And we've talked before uh, on this, uh, on Take 5, about kind of the, the volume and variability and the, the issues uh, that the industry faces. And it's all about technology and efficiency. Collecting a lot of this data and using it can lead to faster locate times. It just means that, uh, you know, information, you're not sort of reinventing the wheel every time. And there's a, a ton of this information that can be used to crank up the efficiency, I think, of a big, big part of the locate uh, process. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I would also say to Jason that, as you kind of mentioned, some of these use cases are already in practice today. Um, Pelican Corp has already uh, put in some of these use cases using their technology as well. So we'd love to hear from our audience as to how yeah. you guys collect your exhaust data, the use cases, how you use it, how it benefits you. Uh, so definitely please uh, contact us below and then also subscribe to our channel for more information. And uh, we hope to see you next time. See you soon. All right. Thanks.